What's up, everybody? I hope you're all doing real well this week. Thank you for tuning in. If you've got questions for next week, please get them in the comments below. Until then, let's answer some of your questions. Has the fact that I studied math influenced the way I play guitar? Uh, not in any kind of conscious way. Uh, I'm definitely not thinking about math when I'm like sitting down playing guitar. In fact, I'm normally not thinking about anything when I'm playing guitar. Uh, but other than that, I mean, when you can understand some of those more complicated concepts in like physics or math or anything like that. Uh, it does make seeing through a lot of the like bullshit you hear in the guitar community um, where they just like quote stuff and numbers and statistics that don't really mean anything. So uh, if anything, it's maybe incredibly skeptical verging on complete cynicism when it comes to a lot of these things. Uh, and obviously things with like time signatures and just the kind of like rudimentary music stuff that I'm sure if you didn't have a background in uh, math or you just weren't quick with being able to like, you know, do basic arithmetic uh, that it might hold you up and you might be pulling this face a lot. But I pull that face a lot anyway. So yeah, it hasn't been this, you know, big, like mysterious thing that's really influenced my playing or anything. But uh, I mean, it's it's helped not just music, it's helped me out in a lot of other aspects of my life. And I would encourage people who are curious about that stuff to follow it up because it's a really beautiful topic uh, that's kind of been trampled all over by shitty education systems here in the West. The Boss GT1000, will I demo it and check it out? Yes, I've had quite a few questions about this. It is coming. I've actually got one on loan at the moment that I want to make some videos with because uh, I've kind of tried like every other modeler. Um, so I'll try and knock out a video at some point in the next couple of days just with some basic tones and get it up for you guys and uh, then do some more detailed stuff a little later down the line. So I put out this video about that Gibson video and uh, it's like just going silly. I've just stopped reading the comments. Leap tad, cuck, soy boy, millennial, wingy, whiny, ha. A lot of people were mentioning like, hey, I don't want to go and buy a Gibson guitar or at least a new Gibson guitar. Uh, a lot of people said, hey, I'm going to go and buy one anyway, in which case, go and do it. You know, uh, whatever makes you happy. It's your money. It's your life. Uh, as Bon Jovi said, it's is my life. In my opinion, these are three great alternatives. If you've got the money to spend on a new Gibson, uh, these are some places where you could otherwise spend them. I certainly have. I put my money where my mouth is with these guitars. So I'll show you three of my favorite uh, guitars that are heavily influenced by the big G. We'll get the ball rolling with my favorite guitar, my SC245 from 2008. It is totally stock except for the machine heads. All I've done is change them from the stock PRS machine heads to a set of Goto SD90s just because I like locking machine heads. The pickups are stock, the electronics are stock, the hardware's stock. It has been set up by Tim at MT Guitars for drop C tuning and this thing just loves chunky high gain amps. Uh, yeah, everybody asks what pickups I've got in it or if I've had it modded or anything, but it's just a bone stock PRS. And for what I do, for the chunky high gain stuff, this is like the ultimate refined modern Les Paul style guitar. <laughs> So I love it for riffage and stuff like that. You can hear that those complex chords are really, really refined. And then if I chuck it on a lead sound, uh, then it's just beautiful to play. The neck is fat without being too fat. Uh, this is just my Goldilocks guitar, I think. So that would certainly be my first choice. Uh, when I did Axe Fest a couple of months ago, PRS loaned me one of their McCarty SC, uh, what is it, 594s? I was going to say 58, but no, it's a 594. And that thing has a little bit more of a vintage vibe than this guitar. It's a little bit more like my McCarty, uh, but it played amazingly well. And those pickups are like 
really, really nicely voiced. I don't like them quite as much as a 245. I didn't have a chance to put them side by side, uh, but they're slightly more towards that kind of vintage voicing, but with high gain and clean sounds, they were unreal. And they had coil taps, which this guitar doesn't have. So in terms of versatility, if I had to do like a three hour cover gig, I would probably go with like a 594. Uh, if you just want to like absolutely crush skulls. So uh, try get a 245 from like 2008, 2009, because um, they're really fantastic guitars. Going across the Atlantic to Japan, this is an STR LJ1. It is very clearly just a like one-to-one -one Les Paul knockoff, except for the headstock, it's got Mojo Tone humbuckers. And this for me has a really nice vintage style grind with like a high gain sound. You kind of get this. <laughs> But it is absolutely beautiful with like a clean JTM style amp on the middle position, which is such an underrated position with twin humbucker guitars. <laughs> the detail on this guitar uh, really blows away a lot of other stuff that's a lot more expensive like the nut the frets everything was pretty much smack on perfect uh, I had it on a plec basically as soon as it came out of the box and there was one little fret adjustment that we needed to make that was highly likely uh, you could attribute that to the fact that it come from winter in Japan to summer in Australia which have pretty big extremes but yeah it's just a really really well put together unashamed clone. Finally if you can find a used American made Hamer guitar I couldn't recommend them enough again their build quality is absolutely out of this world and they've just got classic designs like uh, you know this old guy which is basically a 58 Explorer clone, there's no two ways about it. Um, the only thing is it says Hamer instead of Gibson on the headstock. This is African Limba or Corinna, and uh, it's got a Duncan EVH pickup and a Jazz in it. And there's just like a cool variation on, you know, the classic Explorer shape that I think Hamer have been making since the mid 70s or something like that. And this guitar I like for like Molly Hatchet or something like that. <laughs> probably like an Alan Collins thing as well, uh, you know, being uh, a tall lanky dude playing an explorer shaped guitar. But yeah, if you don't want to buy the big G, um, go, and, go and check out those three alternatives. To me, my PRS SE245, it, like I said, it's like the ultimate modern Les Paul, the STR. It is an unashamed clone, but it is a lot cheaper and it's built to an amazing spec. And then Hamer guitars, everybody forgets about them. You can get them for absolute bargains on the used market. Uh, of course, there's a whole bunch of other manufacturers. Like if you wanted, you know, boutique replica stuff, you've got like Gilly Ron, you've also got riffs on the PRS thing like Nags and Huber. You've got Dean guitars, I guess they're in a similar category to Hamer to me, where it's like, you know, they've kind of been making these uh, either, you know, very, very close replicas uh, or inspired by designs. I know a bunch of you are just going to be like, they just ripped them off. Uh, but they've been doing it since the 70s. Um, yeah, there's so many great uh, guitars out there at the moment. Or just go and buy a used Gibson from like the early 90s or early 2000s because they're great guitars as well. I've got a 2002 Premium Plus that I love. It's a fantastic instrument. Um, but like I said in my other video, 
I kind of said everything I need to say in my other video, so I won't say it again. This wasn't a question on the channel. This is actually a question that one of my teenage students asked me during the week, and uh, I figured I would communicate the answer that I gave them to you guys. They uh, are really into metal, and they want to join a metal band, and they want to write original music, and pretty much every week they come over for an hour, and um, they bring in riffs, and we record them, and we workshop them, and I help them with some writing, and they're writing fantastic stuff. So the question came up, uh, like, how do I get in a band? How do I take that step from being someone playing in my bedroom to uh, like, you know, getting into the local scene and recording music and whatever else you want to do? And I think the best answer to that is to just go to shows uh, or, you know, if there's like an event, uh, like I know in Perth, there is a local metal night every month where you can go down, hang out with metal heads. They have metal DJs, metal bands play, there's metal quiz. It's like everything you could imagine. Uh, towards that just to sort of bring the community together. So that's pretty cool. But honestly, when I turned 18, I just started 18 here in Australia. You can drink. Uh, not that I drink, but you can go out to venues. Uh, when I turned 18, I just started going to local shows and hanging out and like checking out bands. And I met people there. Like I met other people. You know, we'd be what sitting there. I remember the very first gig I ever went to was uh, Voyager and Chaos Divine. Uh, if you haven't checked both of those bands out, incredible prog metal bands. Go and do it. Uh, absolutely world class. And uh, I met lots of people that night who I'm still regularly in touch with who are in the music scene, who are putting out great stuff and making great music. And uh, yeah, it's just because I decided to go to a local metal show. So yeah, the best way to meet other musicians is to go to gigs because... I know that if I've got a night off and, you know, a band that I like is playing, I'm going to go and see them. The, the issue is that I'm often gigging, so it's like there's all these gigs I can't go to anymore. It's a catch-22. Uh, but if you're a young guy or girl and you want to basically join a band, start by going to shows and supporting your local scene. It kind of sounds cheesy, but it does work like that. If I had to design a signature guitar and a signature amp, <laughs> what would I do? Uh, I don't know. I've kind of... I feel like I found those signature pieces of gear. They don't have my signature on them, but they're just pieces of gear which work really well for my style and uh, have kind of helped me really refine my style. Like, you know, a PRS single cut, my SE245 that I talked about earlier in the video. It's my favorite guitar. I wouldn't really change anything about it because it sounds great. Like, it makes me want to write music. That's my, like, absolute test of a great piece of gear. Does it inspire me to make music? Or does it just inspire me to, like, noodle around aimlessly? And, uh, yeah, that guitar makes me want to write riffs and write songs. And I've written a lot of ragdoll songs on that guitar since I've got it. So that gets the big tick. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, like, the wraparound bridge is the one tiny little thing that I look at and go, oh, that could be a bit better. Uh, but it's fine. Like, it stays in tune. So what am I complaining about? So, like, maybe that with, like, a tunematic style. Uh, but then again, that's kind of basically like the Mark Tremonti signature model as well, like hotter pickups. I know he's got a trem, but I'm not a trem guy. I'd go with, like, a, you know, tunematic. So that would be my really exotic signature model. Or maybe, like, a PRS SE, which is just a copy of my SE245 with the same pickups. And then that way people could actually afford it. Uh, that would be pretty cool. That would be like my dream guitar project because uh, the SEs are great guitars and PRS kind of have that right where it's like a lot of their signature models are SE guitars. They get people into the like PRS ecosystem and then, you know, you move on to the cores and the S2s and things like that. It's clever business on their end. Um, in terms of a signature amp, well... I just use an Axe FX, so that's got like all the amps and I can get in there and tweak the fine parameters if I want to and basically customize my own amp. But um, yeah, maybe if I had to design a custom amp, maybe it's something I should and like uh, chat to like Nick at Cherryatone or something and work on, I don't know, like a custom circuit or, you know, the perfect Marshall because I've got a couple of Marshalls that I really like, but there's things that I don't like with them. So maybe it would end up being something like that, like a custom Cherryatone. Uh, yeah, the best way to learn a new style on the guitar, uh, this is kind of like, how do I join a band? Is like, well, if you want to join a band, go and see bands and hang out with bands. If you want to learn a style, go and see bands and listen to bands that play that style and learn the songs. I think that's the big thing. A lot of the time people think there's some secret source where they've got to like refine their picking technique or their sense of time or something. Just go and learn songs. If you want to learn how to play jazz, uh, go and learn some basic jazz standards or, you know, learn some Wes Montgomery or learn some Mike Stern or learn some Mahavishnu. If you want to learn how to play metal, pick your favorite metal band, learn their back catalog. If you want to learn how to play rock, do the same thing. Um, I remember transcribing by ear 
all of Rainbow Rising over like six months when I was about 15 or 16. And uh, it taught me so much about music and it taught me so much about that style. Still can't play it properly, but you know, that was such an amazing learning experience. So learning songs is definitely the way to go there. And that is Q&A for another week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, Ragdoll has a brand new single coming out next Friday. So there's not going to be a Q&A next Friday. I have a gig that night in Perth. If you're in Perth, come and watch us at the Rosemount with Sisters Doll. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. We are launching the new single. It's going to be out. You're going to see the video and uh, get some questions in for two weeks if there is anything you would like to ask me. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.